Hey, what's up, what's up, what's up? So, why, why I will probably never get married? Hi, my name is Onka. I assume that anti-marriage is the reason that you click this video, either for it or against it. And I hope that the things that I have to say will make some sense for you. So, marriage is great, right? Americans say that 50% of marriage and in divorce and i tried to find a survey about it but apparently i can't find the relevant one since people usually are not honest when answering a psychological survey but one thing for sure that divorce rate is increasing each year if we try to seek the essence of marriage itself seems like the original purpose of marriage has shifted the main goal of marriage early on was to act as an alliance between families. Well, it's still the same still today, but at that time, most couples didn't marry because they were in love, but for economic lessons. Well, today, seems like love became the first reason, supported by, you know, several reasons such as companionships, children, etc. But if love become the first reason, are we really understand what love is? I would like to quote a word from Rick and Morty. The word goes along like this. Um, love is a chemical reaction that compels animals to breathe. It's gonna hit hard at first, but slowly fade away, leaving people in the stranded weddings. And if we try to really understand the words, we know that we have basic chemical reactions in our body, right? Such as dopamine, oxytocin, um, serotonin, testosterone, estrogen, and many more. If we try to approach it to make it simpler, all of those chemicals are getting um, revolved around relationships. Simple example, uh, by having um, physical contact with your partner, your body automatically will create oxytocin, dopamine, um, serotonin. Um, for males, maybe increase your testosterone, um, increase your um, estrogen and those increase is not like ordinary increase like you're eating for something but it's very exponential it's not like you can get it from somewhere else and in fact women or situation increase at its peak when they have sex while men there's things called fossil presence it's drop when men have sex that's probably explain why when people in love they will feel so great and that's probably also the reason why when uh, when you're in love, you're not thinking very straight, you're not very logical. You made um, a lot of the mistakes, perhaps. And uh, maybe this is very popular among the men, but there is a bit of advice out there that men are better to make decisions after they uh, masturbate. The reason why, because they will think more logically. Uh, some people call it post not clarity. They will remove some chemicals that um, blinded men to make an important decisions. Even Japanese have a special word for it, it's called Kinjitaimu, if I'm not mistaken. Packed in Rick and Morty words. The second line is, it's gonna hit hard at first and slowly fade away, leaving people in the stranded weddings. Well, it's true, we as a human being, we are not designed to always have um, high level of chemical reactions. We as a human being, uh, we have something that's called uh, as a neural adaptation. So it's basically our body have tendencies to desensitize uh, the constant stimuli. Um, to keep us being overloaded and keep us prepared to sense um, probably any out of ordinary that we might need to know. So in the other words, you will get bored. Our happiness with our partner will be diminished over time. And by the time, our partner perhaps will no longer um, accept us at some point. And it seems like marriage system seems to um, become the solution for this in this modern world. Because people can't just keep changing partner every time they feel that way since it will be bad for global stability and we should know that the fact that human beings are not designed to breed in captivity even mammals are not designed to breed in captivity it's in our blood, it's in our um, biological phenomenon called college evac when our happiness is diminished we as a human we will starting to notice our partner flows, his or her flows which have actually already been there since the beginning but you we as a human being you don't care about it since we are blinded by love we are crazy in love or maybe your partner don't have any flows but you will create a problem since you 
need reason. Our brain trying to make sense everything, trying to make sense your relationship, why it's not working anymore, and they will create a problem there. They trying to make sense, or oh, maybe it's, uh, it's not available, always available from you or something. I have a case where I believe every marriage will go through. So, like I said before, when two things happen, when our chemicals that we used to have decrease and the problems start to appear, um, people in relationship, they will try to seek help. Uh, so there is two options for this one. The first one, people usually seek help to their friends or the people that are very close to him, to her. Or the second option is clinical psychologists. But if the person pick the first one, the friends, is, um, it's very tricky. Because your friends, your friends' background, uh, it's very important. Since if you tell your story to your friends that majority will defend you, your, um, you will push your relationship even further. But if you have friends that will defend your partner, that will help a bit of your relationship since at least because of it, you will contemplate about what you did wrong and you will try to outlook things. But if it's just the second option, it's clinical psychologist. Um, obviously, uh, it's going to be more logical, more professionals since it's their job. But this is also tricky. Because I've talked to psychologists in the past, and I can say the good psychologist is the one that um, will not provide you with answers and solutions, but the one that can, that will make you think that you came up with the solution. That, so they're gonna try to make you think that you came up with your own solutions, and you need to find a good one, obviously. So the tricky part is the majority of people feel like psychologists didn't play a role, or, or or feel like they are spending money money for nothing since they eventually find their own solutions. But they don't realize that psychologist is the one that makes them think that way. And if the person said to the clinician is that uh, um, the problem is is in the partner flows. I started to notice that my partner maybe um, sleep very late or didn't have time for me. So obviously the psychologist will try to uh, mediate the flows. But if the client said something like uh, my partner have changed. He used to love me, or he used to, you know, spend time more with me, or something like that. The core of the problem, obviously, because um, their happiness has diminished over time. So at this rate, um, majority of psychologists will probably ask them to create some sort of uh, new spark, um, such as go on holiday together or do some new. Um, activity that will create a novelty because um, they will both of them will jump into the unknown they will jump into the storm right so this is also work not only for um, um, not only for this case but also the work if you're trying to make someone fall in love with you you need to make him or her spend time with you no matter what jumping into strong together or the one billion solutions that almost every psychiatrist argue about this have a kid have a children it's very controversial i know but you can't deny the fact that majority of the wedding can survive because they have kid children at stake kid children baby the concept is the same even they're much greater because baby can add up constant novelty in their relationship they need to watch him grow they need to you know all things is going to be noble in their relationship so for that case for the case i just mentioned before i just want i don't i don't want to focus on the bad sides right i'm trying to be you know trying to keep things balanced so um conflict is not always bad things there is research shows that stress conflict is actually an ingredient um, in the attachment of love even manifestation of hatred somehow enhance love i know it's very paradoxical but it's still in the you know polarity principle so it makes sense so the hardest part is you somehow need to find balance between your um, hated hatred and love in your relationships and another good side of your weddings is you and your partner are legally um, able to have children and interesting things about children eh? they will be the only things that is more important 
than yourself, no matter how narcissistic you are. Even your wife is not able to compare to those feelings. Speaking of wife as children, it actually reminds me to the word of um, Chris Rock, if I'm not mistaken, when he, having a, when he was having a stand-up comedy. And the words goes along with something like this. Only women, children, and dogs can be loved unconditionally. A man can only be loved under the conditions or circumstances where he can provide something. Well, um, there is some right and wrong in that word, in that sentence. I believe in a relationship, you will be taken from granted for both ways, yeah? But the difference, a man need a reason to be loved. It's not on the girls, but we as men, we, we will feel like shit if you can't provide something and it will affect us the way uh, we treat our partner. And women don't think that way, so that's the difference. Also another thing that seems like marriage is also um, a form of lack of trust because technically you don't really need to make a formal alliance with people you trust, just like business. Um, you do formal alliance in business because you believe that or you're afraid that one day your partner will change, right? So a marriage is a built on the idea that seems like handcuffing um, each other in order to prevent the other one from leaving. And like all handcuffs, it has a key where is it very expensive, which is divorce. So weddings, um, it's very complicated, so much at stake. I only talk a bit, a tiny bit about a part of it. I haven't talked about money, which usually one of the core problem of relationships. And I feel like the risks is outweigh the benefit, right? So I don't get the idea why we should, you know, um, force ourselves to be with someone for this or for life. It just doesn't make any sense. And oh yeah, one more thing that I think we need to consider is the way that um, society perceives us because it's very uncommon for someone to stay single. So we are born in the world with less autonomy freedom you have in your sexual relationships. The more society legitimates and praises you and regards you as your relationship as more real. So for example, if you are single, even though by choice, you will regard by society as pity. And perhaps if you tell them you are single by choice, they will assume it's as a defense mechanism kind of things and encourage you that you will find um, someone special one day. And another scenario, if you are dating someone officially, for example, and you gain acknowledge from society that you have become, you know, um, less autonomy and it's good. And at that time, you probably going to be encouraged and you're going to be asking frequently every time they call about and they're going to put it in every small talk about when you're going to get married and it's going to be starting to annoy you by the time. And the last scenario is when you were married. Do you think you are free when you reach this level? Technically, you have become zero autonomy at all, but it doesn't free you from social expectation. You will always have, you will always be expected to follow the tradition such as having a baby, having a house, having status, um, and you're expected to fulfill your full to leave your, to not leave your partner until you know that push you push you. I can conclude that at any level of autonomy, you will always get um, society pressure, no matter how hard you ignore it. And the thing is, we can't really ignore it since we live in a society. So if the reason you are getting married to be free from social expectation, you are not solving the problems. You just literally inviting someone to just solving social expectation together. So yeah, I think that's all from me today. Um, personally, I'm still not sure about my standpoints, even I don't like the idea of marriage. I feel like one day, um, I will probably get married eventually, but I don't know, I'm well done. So that's, that's all. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.